you. Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you, King of glory, for such a time as this, a time to come together as one accord, one body, your ecclesia, to study your word. Your word says we need to study it so we can be able to rightly divide it. Ha, and Hallelujah. We want to come up higher tonight, Lord. Help us to come up higher. Ho Ramashika Namahana Ne. Holy Spirit, our teacher, teach us the meat and the bones of these scriptures so that we may be strong. We can't live or survive on milk. In the times that we are in and the times that are coming, Lord. We want the full measure, hallelujah, of understanding. So spirit of understanding, ha, ha, ha. Help us uh, to, to understand as, as, as Pastor Kos breaks down. Daniel chapter 9 for us tonight. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. We give you praise and glorify your name. We pray for everyone who will listen to this recording, even after this session tonight. Ha! Let them have encounters, insights, revelations that will Hallelujah. catapult them into the seasons and the times that you would have them be in. More, Lord, more, 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 more of your anointing, more of your glory, more. Ha, ha, ha. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. Hope you had a pleasant week, braving the elements that are out there. Mm -hmm. But we are, we thank God there's warmth inside the house. Mm -hmm. So we are grateful that we can come together and look at the word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we are in Daniel chapter nine. Anyone with a question from the previous chapter? Please feel welcome to just ask before we go into this chapter if you discovered something. Because normally when we share, it's also good to go and regurgitate to where you go back and look at scripture and compare what you know and what is was being said. Mm -hmm. We don't know it all. The Bible says we know in part, so it's important to keep on learning. Mm -hmm. So even as we look at Daniel chapter 9, let it not be like a final or a ceiling to you. But let it be a foundation upon which you can build on your knowledge of scripture. Mm. There's no question we'll go into Daniel chapter 9, then um, somebody to read the first two verses for us, then we just begin, others will catch up if they are coming in. The first two verses of Daniel chapter 9, somebody to read. I just saw it and, I, and I, I'm looking for it now, sorry. That's all right. That's why we are many. <laughs> One can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter nine. I'll read um, the first, the first two verses. You said. Yeah, the first two verses. We just want to start with the introduction, then we go into. Oh, yeah. I just find it. Sorry. Yes. Daniel 9, verse 1 and 2. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of Median descent, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the books the number of years which, according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet, must pass before the desolations which had been pronounced on Jerusalem would end, and it was 70 years. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Um, the first two verses it brings introduction again. This one occurred a year after what we events of chapter eight. We said chapter eight was the year that Babylon fell. So this is a year after Babylon fell. Mm -hmm. So apparently Ahasuerus, which means I'll be silent and poor, or whatever that meant to them. Or called Xerxes in, in that's the Greek version, or Astegesis in some translation. 
was the king, uh, was made king over, he was king of Media, but he was also made king over Babylon, which they had conquered. They defeated Babylon together with Cyrus of Persia, as we saw in the previous chapters in 539 BC. So these events uh, could have happened 538 or 537 BC. So the Medians were descendants of Japheth, as we saw in the table of nations in, chapter, in, in, in Genesis chapter 10, actually. That's where the table of, na of nations are, where the nations began to grow out of uh, the first men. Uh, he, he mentions Jeremiah that he, he understood by the writings of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. You find that Jeremiah means Yahweh exalts or God exalts. So he was a prophet at the time of the fall of Babylon in 586 BC. And prior to that, he was warning the nation about the disaster that was going to befall them. So they didn't hearken unto Jeremiah and um, 70 years were of desolation, which we see here in Daniel 9 were decreed. If you can, you can read that in Jeremiah 25 and 27. So the 70 years, let's look at the 70 years. Where did they come from? The Bible says the children of Israel did not observe the Sabbaths. The Sabbaths that are being mentioned here are not the seventh day. You need to distinguish sometimes when scripture mentions Sabbath, because well, Sabbath can mean the seventh day or it can mean the seventh year. Okay. So he is talking about the seventh seventh year which the land was supposed to rest. They were not supposed to cultivate crops on in the seventh year, the 14th, 21st, and it went on until 7, 7, which is 49th year, the land will rest, and the 50th, the land will rest again because it will be year of jubilee. So for 490 years, they broke this seventh year Sabbath. In other words, they still cultivated crops on the Sabbath year which was contrary to what they were commanded. So the land had to rest for 70 years to compensate for the 70 years that it had not rested. That's why they were sent into captivity. So this is the 70 years that Daniel now understood. So the exile period began around 606 BC. Mm -hmm. And that was the time when the first exiles came like Daniel. He was among the first of the royal tribe to come to Babylon. So by 538 BC, now Babylon had been conquered, which means the, the nation to which they were sent was already defeated. That's why Daniel now was prompted by these events, the political events that were happening to begin to seek God for redress. That the time allotted is expired, so we need to go back to our land to rebuild. But Daniel himself did not go as we, as we find out in the scriptures that he remained around that area, even went up to Persia, where now he was put in the lion's den, happened in the uh, in realm of Persia. So Daniel himself did not return to Jerusalem. If, if he went, he, was, he went on a short trip, but basically he remained within the palace court until he was, by this time, uh, Daniel could have been around nearly 90 years. So when you are talking of Daniel, we are not talking of a young man here. He was young then when we began when we began Daniel chapter one, mm -hmm. when he was a youth, maybe probably around 20 years or, or less. But now he 70, after 70 years, you can add 70 and 20, you find that he could be around 90 years. That's the, the mm -hmm. time he he had retired from politics at some point when he was called to interpret Belshazzar's writing, the writing on the wall. He was no longer in the course. That's why the queen says, I know a man mm -hmm. who came from Judah. He was no longer part of the, the palace protocol. Mm -hmm. Anyone to read from, uh, any questions before we continue? Mm -hmm. This is just the introduction. Mm -hmm. No, that's interesting. No, no questions. Uh, today you need to be ready for some heavy stuff. If we, last week was heavy, this week will be a bit heavier. <laughs> so get yourself, prepare yourself, fasten your belts. Mm -hmm. We are going to fly. So mm -hmm. somebody to read from verse 2 to oh, verse two. 7. Verse 3 to 7. Three, three, actually, verse 3 to, verse three okay. to verse 8. Um, 3 to 8. Yeah, 
And I set my face to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dr dreadful God, dread, yeah, dreadful God, who keeps covenant, mercy, and loving kindness with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and dealt perversely and done wickedly and have rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinance. Neither have we listened to and heeded your servants, the prophet, who spoke, who spoke in in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O oh Lord, righteousness belong to you. Let's continue. Apologies, apologies, Jessica. I think I, I muted you in error. I thought I didn't know it was you was reading. I, I was trying to get rid of that sound. Yeah, uh, I think you're now in verse seven, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Jessica, could you kindly unmute yourself? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, verse sorry. seven. Yeah, oh Lord, righteousness belong to you. But to us, confusion and shame of face, as at this day, to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel, to those who are near and those who are far off, though all the countries to which you have driven them because of the treacherous trespass which they have committed against you. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, to us belong confusion and shame of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so Daniel began to pray, and we are going to look at um, some of the things that um, occurred in his prayer. His prayer was accompanied by fasting, by sackcloth, which is uh, a way of uh, humbling oneself. They used to put on sackcloth and remove the, the fen fancy clothing. So sacred was a, a way of hum, humility, humbling oneself. And I remember during the time of um, um, uh, which, which uh, prophet was that? During the time of Elijah, there was a time he was sent to pronounce judgment on the house of Ahab, who was king of Israel. And after the judgment was pronounced, God said to, to, to Elijah, his prophet, have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself and put on sackcloth? So for a king to put on sackcloth, he says, because he has done this, the disaster proclaimed will not happen in his time, but in his son's time. So sackcloth, it attracted God's attention. Because when you humble yourself, you invite God's presence. You are choosing to dethrone yourself from your throne which is your own self and put God first. Supplication is a drawn out prayer, which means it can go on for a while. So that is what Daniel, the tools that Daniel used in his intercession. He acknowledged also God's chastisement that it was warranted. When you are a prayer warrior or an intercessor or even a child of God for that matter, one thing you need to do is to be in agreement with God. There are people who pray, but they are not in agreement with God. Mm -hmm. There are people who gather to pray, but sometimes they, their motives are not right. Mm -hmm. 
So you need to search your heart whether your motives are right. Because when you pray, you can waste the whole night. Some people call for all night prayers, but their motives are wrong. Sometimes they, they are praying for a political leader, which they have not heard from God that this is what needs to happen. So they want to enthrone somebody other than what is on God's heart. So be careful when you join groups that say, today we are praying for so-and-so, that mm -hmm. you are, they are in line with what God wants. So Daniel understood, yeah, Daniel had the basis, he had, he had the firm ground upon which his intercession was based. It was based on the 70 years that we had decreed that they had expired. So Daniel sought God to redress the situation, which was the restoration of Judah, Jerusalem, and the temple, which was bent. So Daniel knew that this is the time to restore what God had intended, originally intended. So his prayer was very much on God's heart. 70 years, of, uh, we, we talked about the seventh year, the land not being rested. We'll see again the 490 years appearing later on as in, in prophetic text towards the end of this chapter. So Daniel's prayer began with acknowledgement of guilt of leaders, kings, princes, priests, and the people of Judah. It's important that when you, you pray, you acknowledge the leaders' offenses if you are praying for a nation. It's important to highlight the, the leaders' faults, the princes, the priests, the, and the and even the people of the of the land they had, they had ignored the the warnings of Jeremiah the prophet and the prophets who were before him such as Isaiah. Mm -hmm. So um, addressing the issue of iniquity, prolonged sinning sinning from one generation to another brought about a curse. So when a when, when a people or a nation continues to sin from one generation to another, that sin turns out to be an iniquity. And iniquities are come in different ways and forms. And sometimes if somebody like Cain, when he killed his brother, the bloodline of Cain now had murder in his bloodline, which was an iniquity. So Cain was a consigned to a vagabond, to wandering about. So that spirit can continue in a generation as an iniquity. Mm -hmm. So Daniel vindicated God's righteousness in judgment that they had broken the laws of God in Hebrew, that's mitzvah. The laws of God were broken and as a result, God needed to act. Shame of face due to sin, wickedness and rebellion. Mm -hmm. In other words, when, when somebody has shame, it means they cannot stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. Shame will cause you to hide. There's a scripture which says, my shame has caused, has caused me, you to hide your face from me. Mm -hmm. So shame causes people to hide. People with the shame, they don't come in the open like Adam. And he went and hid. So shame will always cause people not to abide in the light. They want to hide from, from mm -hmm. others. They want to hide from God. So that was the issue with Judah. Oh. And Daniel mentioned something else. I'm not sure whether it's what we read or it's in verses that follow. That Judah, though they had sinned, they had not made intercession. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that the priests and the prophets and all Judah, no one had stood in the gap for the nation. No one had interceded. No one had pleaded with God. Even though the 70 years had expired, still there was no one who was approaching God and saying, God, have mercy on us. We have messed up, but come and help us. So it's important to pray because the Bible does say that in Chronicles that I look for a man who could stand in the gap that I will not destroy the nation. And I found none. So prayer is very much needed. Prayer is the lifeline of believers. At the beginning of this pandemic, when I was in prayer, I remember the Lord speaking to me and he says, the Christians are praying very much. Their prayers are long and drawn out, but their prayers are dry. Prayer mm -hmm. needs to be accompanied with worship. Mm -hmm. Prayer needs to be accompanied with praise. Mm -hmm. Prayer needs to be accompanied with thanksgiving. 
many times when people talk about spiritual warfare, they are quick to to go for things that are that they think this this will impress God. Mm-hmm. But prayer to impress God, you need to look at the pattern of the Lord's prayer. Mm-hmm. This you shall pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayer mm-hmm. should always start with glorifying God. Mm-hmm. No matter how hard your situation is, start from that posture of glorifying God. Amen. Start acknowledging God. If you if you if you have, you have time, you go to Acts chapter 24 when you the arrest of Paul and you begin to read how he addressed the kings, various kings he stood before. He always began by acknowledging their their influence or what they had done in the realm that he was being tried in. It's a form of prayer. He didn't stand it up by presenting his need, his request. He started by focusing on the king himself, that we have enjoyed the prosperity in your reign. We have enjoyed this. That is the model of prayer. Thanksgiving always brings breakthroughs. Yeah. So be careful when you say I've got a need and you just thrust, thrust yourself into the presence of God. God needs to be approached. I'll enter his God's gates with thanksgiving. You need reverence. There's a need for reverence when we approach God. Anyone with a question there? Mm-hmm. If there are no questions, let's pick I up. Just, for- I just wanted to ask about, um, you know, where you were, you were talking about prolonged singing, sinning from one generation to another brings a curse. So what if it's just one generation of sins? Does it definitely move down to the next lineage or generally ends there? Because you, you, you said that it's I mean, if, if, if for an, in, an individual sins, mm. it depends whether the sin has been dealt with. Like if you talk of murder, if it has not been dealt with, it goes into the generation, the bloodline of that person as an iniquity. Mm. That's why you find that even fathers who are thieves, their children become thieves. Mm. Because it's already an iniquity that is running in the family. You find the family that lie as well. It's, it goes like you look at Abraham lying in Egypt, then Isaac lying to Abimelech about his wife Sarah. Then you look at Jacob cheating his brother. So it was like a generation going through the generations. Mm-hmm. You look at incest running in the family of David, it became mm-hmm. an iniquity. Mm-hmm. So those things they need the renunciation. So the prayer that we are meeting here of Daniel is a, is a prayer of renunciation. Mm-hmm. Renunciation is preceded by acknowledgement of guilt. Mm-hmm. So if you are to, ag- intercession or prayer is agreeing with God. Mm-hmm. When you say, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you are mm-hmm. inviting righteousness and justice, which mm-hmm. is the foundation of God's throne, according to Psalm 89 verse 14. Mm-hmm. So you want what God has to happen where you are or in a nation you are praying for. So you have to be on God's side. Mm-hmm. If you pick another side, which is not God's side, then it's no longer prayer. Mm-hmm. Because you are supposed to be a representative of God. Like Abraham, when he interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, he was the righteous man in the area. Mm-hmm. And God says, should I hide it from Abraham, what I'm about to do? seeing mm-hmm. that I'm going to instruct him to teach his children to walk in the ways of the Lord. So Abraham interceded to the point where he knew that this is it. Mm-hmm. He came to a point where intercession, there's a point where intercession stops. Mm-hmm. Many mm-hmm. intercessors, they don't know that, but intercession, there's a point where it stops. Okay. So in Abraham's case, when intercession stopped, that's when the wrath of God came upon those cities of the plain. Mm. And even when you pray for a sick person, it's important to understand that sometimes it is the will of God to take them home. Mm. And sometimes some believers, they get offended mm. because God has taken them home because it, dying is a form of healing. Mm. It's a permanent healing. They will go to a place where there's no sickness, there's no pain and there's no death. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when we pray, we need also to be listening to what God is saying about the situation. 
He can tell you to stop praying for that person and pray for their relatives mm -hmm. to be strengthened during the, the passing of that person. So in, you need to be also listening to the, to the God you are praying to. It's mm. a two-way communication. Any question? Mm. Right, let's pick it up from verse 8. We read 8, did we? Le 10. Yeah. Nine from now. 9 now, from verse 9 to verse 14. Somebody to read. Okay. To the Lord our God belong mercy and loving kindness and forgiveness um, for we have rebelled against him and we have not obeyed the voice of the lord our god by walking in his laws which he set before us through his servants and prophets yes all israel has transgressed your law, even turning aside that they might not obey your voice. Therefore, the curse has been poured out on us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. It, Levite is 26, 14. 45 Deuteronomy 28 15 to 68 and he had carried out intact his threatening words which he threatened against us and against our judges the kings princes and rulers generally who ruled us and he has brought upon us a great evil for under the whole heavens, there has not been done before anything so dreadful as he had caused to be done against Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses as to all this evil, that would surely come upon transgressors. And so it has come upon us, yet we have not earnestly begged for forgiveness and entreated the favor of the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and have understanding and become wise in your in your truth. Deuteronomy 4, 29, 28, 15. I don't know what FF means. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you see now that when he begins to pray, he, he mentions that um, God's law had visited them, the curse of the law had visited them. And sometimes when you read scripture like that, it says God was watching like he was waiting for them to sin in order for them to punish. That's the kind of uh, image you might have in your head, but that's not what it really literally means. When you talk of the law or the case of the law, you are talking of a system in operation. Mm. I don't know whether you understand a system in operation. You find when you go, if you go to a playground and you see children playing, like on the swings, if you jump on a swing, there's a system of operation that literally takes over, isn't it? Mm. You begin to swing as well. Yeah. If you go on something that is going around, mm. there's a system of going around that is going on and you end up doing the same. Mm. So the law here is also a system in operation, mm. which means if you want to keep the law, the system of operation begins to operate in your life. Mm. So the law condemns every lawbreaker. Mm. So it's not God who condemns, it's the law. It mm. condemns everyone who breaks the law. You become a transgressor of the law. Mm. So believers are not under the law, but they are under grace. Okay. 
But sadly, there are believers who live under the law. And when they do that, the motions of sin are aroused. Sinful passions become revived. If you get to Romans chapter 7, it talks that, like, about that. That I once was alive before the law came, but when God sin is alive, and I died. So the law will condemn even the best of men, as it did to Moses. It didn't enter the promised land. But the grace will save the worst of men, as it did to Paul. Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, he says, here is a faithful saying worth of all acceptance that Christ came to save sinners of whom I am chief. He called himself a chief sinner. But he says, by the grace of God, I am now what I am. I am what I am. Mm -hmm. So grace will always reach out to somebody who is in their waste state like the prodigal son. It's a story of grace. Mm. But if you are to take the story of the prodigal son and put it back in the Old Testament, there's a similar story which was given, which says that if, the, if a father is a son who does this, he is in the mountains where, where the idols, he defiles himself with this and he does this, he does this. He says the father should take that son to my altars that he may die. The same story that happened with the prodigal son in a different system of operation, death was the result. Mm. But when the prodigal son came home, a fattened calf was killed. A sinet ring was put on his finger. Sandals were put on his feet mm. and a robe of righteousness. Mm. So depending on which side you are looking at things, if you want to live by the law, it will condemn you. Mm. There's no one who is made righteous by the law. The law was not given for righteousness. Mm. It was given to reveal sin so that when grace, grace comes, people will flee to the law, to, mm. from the law to grace. Mm. You remember there's a story in the Bible when Israel was entering into the promised land, they were told to keep the cities of refuge. They created three on the Transjordan and when they crossed over, there were three cities. If you killed a man accidentally, you would have to run to those cities, lest the, 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 the relatives of the deceased will catch up with you and you'll be killed. So the, the law was like that. You have to flee to the city of refuge, which is grace. Because the law will condemn everyone who wants to live by it. This is the problem that we have with Israel right now. They are trying to end their righteousness through the law. But the Bible does say the just shall live by faith. The just will not live by the law. So they live by faith. So this is the condemnation that the law brings a system in operation which, which makes people to want to do sin. You remember before Israel was given the law, there's no record of their sin. But the moment Moses got the laws in the mountain, there was a golden calf from the at the base of the mountain. Mm -hmm. So the law, it, 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 it quickened the sinful passions in them leading to rebellion. Yeah. Any question? Yeah. Right, um, let's see the next slide. And I think this one will be for the next reading, uh, picking it up from verse 14. 14. Somebody to read from verse 14 to 19, please. I suppose I could read it. Therefore, the Lord has kept ready the calamity, evil, and has brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is uncompromisingly righteous and rigidly just in all his works, which he does, keeping his word, and we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord, our God, who brought your people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and secured yourself renowned and a name as at this day 
we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all your righteousness and justice, I beseech you, let your anger and your wrath be brought away from your city, Jerusalem. Your holy mountain, because of our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach and a byword to all who are around about us. Now therefore, O our God, listen to and heed the prayer of your servant Daniel um, and his supplication and for your own sake, cause your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. O oh, my God, incline your a and hey, open your eyes and look at your desolations and the city which is called by your name, for we do not present our supplication before you for our own righteousness and justice, but for your great mercy and loving kindness. You want me to go on? Yeah, I just finished with 19. Yeah, O oh Lord, hey, O oh Lord, forgive, O oh Lord, give heed and act. Do not delay for your own sake. O oh my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you, you, you see the prayer of Daniel, it, is, it was ascending here. He, he really was ramping it up. But what, there are a few things that I, I just want to highlight on, on this prayer. The first thing is you find acknowledgement when we are talking of a renunciation of iniquities is acknowledging the sins of, of other people that other people have committed. Okay. So he was confessing the sins of, his, of the kings of Judah, the priests, those that were in authority, the princes, and, those, and the people of Judah. So that's what intercession is about, or renunciation of things that have happened. If there's an iniquity, the way to go about this is to renounce to God what others have done, not just yourself. When you talk of yourself, normally you are talking of repentance, but when you're talking of iniquity, it is going down into the generations of people that have started the iniquity, the snowball of the iniquity. So he was going back to where it all began. But now when he turns now, Daniel's prayer turns now from pleading with God for mercy of things that they messed up into the covenant plea. Daniel understood when you when you pray to God, you need to understand God. The book of Psalm 91 says, because he has known my name, you need to know the name of God, the God you serve. And you need to know what he is about. So Daniel knew what God was about, that God had chosen Jerusalem to be a city. You remember Jesus said, do not swear even by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the king, great king, talking about himself. So he began to provoke God's mercy concerning his covenants for Jerusalem, which was the city of called by his name, for the temple which God chose for a dwelling place. You remember when Solomon built it, the glory of God came upon it. Priests could not enter to minister. And God says, I will abide in this temple. But the people of Judah had become a laughingstock for nations around. They were his people. He says, for your people. Judah were God's people. So he's provoking God's covenant mercies. And for Mount, jo Mount Zion, which God chose for an enduring habitation. All the things that are listed above are covenants that God had concerning that, that land and the people of thereof. So he began to bring these things that as long as Jerusalem is in ruins, people who hear that Jerusalem is the city of the great king, 
it, it's it's burned down. It's it's a laughing stock. The temple itself is destroyed or burned with fire. So you find that all these things were working against what God was supposed to do. You remember when the queen of Sheba came to see Solomon, the wealth and the fame of Solomon. Mm -hmm. She said, even half of what is happening here, I was not, it was not told me. But mm -hmm. it says when she saw the servants of Solomon eating with the golden vessels. So the success of a kingdom is not in the king, mm -hmm. but in the subjects. So Judah was in captivity. And for people to say God's people and they are in Babylon, it didn't, it didn't go well with the God they served. It would appear to people like God had lost power or motivation. So God had to act based on his covenant promises. So Daniel knew where to provoke God's zeal for his covenant. So he began now to ramp it up to say, God, Jerusalem is a city you chose. The temple is your dwelling place. Judah are thy people. Mount Zion you chose for an enduring habitation. So he began to touch on God's covenant. When you are praying, you need to know God's covenant. You are a child of God covenanted through Christ. So your prayers should show that I remember one time I was in prayer with a, with a senior pastor and there were other people who were also praying. And the senior pastor was praying beside me. I was hearing, overhearing what she was praying, though I was praying as well. And God says, that's the kind of prayers I hate. And mm -hmm. it kind of shocked me. Mm -hmm. I said, what? You know, when, when God speaks to you audibly, yeah. Since that's the kinds of prayers I hate. When, when somebody is pleading, when they are supposed to come boldly to the throne of God. Mm -hmm. It's like it was a begging kind of prayer. Mm -hmm. There's a boldness that is needed in prayer. This is what Daniel was now displaying. God says, I don't want that kind of prayer. I need people who pray that know me. Mm -hmm. Prayer has to do with your knowledge of God. That's why sometimes there's a difference between answered prayer and not an answered prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer needs boldness. There was a time I was getting weak in prayer and one time Jesus took me up in heaven mm -hmm. and we were walking like friends as we were going into a building that I later knew that it was a prayer answering room, very massive place. And as we walked in there, suddenly Jesus mode changed into a business mode. Mm -hmm. He began to move from place to place. I was just following behind, observing how he was talking to the angels that at different stations. Has this been done? Has this been done? Has this? It was, I was shocked at the agency of mm -hmm. how he wanted things, prayers answered. Mm -hmm. So when you pray, you must know that you are praying to a God who hears and answers your prayers. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. This, you know, um, Pastor Cosmos, this by by word. I don't understand this bit. I'm, I suppose you just maybe some of it uh, uh, I understand, but um, the byword to all who are around about us, I don't understand that. Well, they, well to say Jerusalem may become a byword, it's like a laughing stock. Mm. Oh, okay. Something, uh, something that is derided, oh, okay. something that is looked down upon. That's oh. a byword. Okay. If people that saw, they would that shake their heads. Oh. Just like the, the people who saw when Jesus was crucified, says mm -hmm. many who saw they were hailing insults, others shook their heads. Yeah. They, they were treating him like a byword, like something that is not uh, useful. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's becoming a byword. Anyone to read from verse 20 to 23? I'll read. Um, while I was still, uh, Gabriel brings an answer. Verse 20. While I was still speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord of my God in behalf of the holy mountain of my God, while I was still speaking in prayer and extremely exhausted, the man Gababa, who, Rabababa, who, ha, 
whom I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and he talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, hey, I have now come to give you insight and wisdom. Oh, hallelujah, and understanding. At the beginning of your supplications, the command ooh, to give you an answer was issued. And I have come to tell you, for you are highly regarded and greatly loved. Therefore, consider the message and begin to understand the meaning of the vision. So Daniel did not finish his prayer, but was interrupted by Gabriel, the angel, the messenger that came to him. So when you pray as a believer, be aware of divine interruptions and embrace them. It's very important that when you pray, you don't bury your head in the sand like an ostrich. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the religious people would say, oh, I'm busy. Have you ever been praying for finances and God sends somebody to knock at your door to give you the money? Mm -hmm. And imagine when you're in prayer and say, I don't want to be interrupted, I'm in prayer. Mm -hmm. You can miss your visitation. Mm -hmm. So prayer needs a listening ear. It's a, it's a two-way communication. So Daniel came at the time of the evening, sacrifice and touched. I mean, Gabriel came to Daniel at the time of the evening, sacrifice and touched him. Notice again the mention of the evening sacrifice. Because that's a very important time. 3 p.m. Because that's the time that Jesus died. He gave up with the ghost here at the time of the evening sacrifice. So mm -hmm. it's a divine time. There's a divine window, a divine portal at this time. We are choosing for time to pray. I would suggest that that's a, that's a good time to pray. But I'm not saying that only prayers that are prayed that time will be answered. But I'm just saying it's a good time to be pray in prayer. Gabriel came to give Daniel skill and understanding mm -hmm. of the, what he was about to relay to him concerning the vision that was be, about to be relayed. So he had to be given skill and understanding. Like, like we're talking about the visions and the dreams, prophetic dreams, that you need wisdom and understanding. You won't understand everything just based on your own understanding. You need humility. If you have received a dream or a prophetic dream or you have had a vision, you need to go back to the source. Many people, they run to the pastor, but that's not the right place to run to. Mm -hmm. Seek God first for an answer. What mm -hmm. is God on God's heart? Mm -hmm. And many times those people, they already have the answer in themselves. Mm -hmm. And they are going to somebody who doesn't even know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Thank God that sometimes we pastors, we pray before we answer. But mm -hmm. sometimes you can meet me in flesh and I just tell you something off my, the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And you can live more confused than you were. Always seek to ask God first. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God first. Mm -hmm. believers they need to put God first I know some believers who reverence men of God I'm not of that ilk I want mm -hmm. believers who have direct communication with God mm -hmm. if they come to you let them come to confirm what something that God has already said to them it's very important that you establish your own personal vertical relationship before a horizontal relationship so Daniel is visited by Gabriel to show him what was to be for his people. Right, we are going to go into the last three verses and uh, we won't finish today because I think we still have uh, over 10 slides in this chapter, just on these three verses, because these three verses are proper loaded. They are proper, proper loaded and you can spend a lot, a lot of time because these, were, these verses are prophetic message, which we need to go bit by bit. We won't finish today, but we are going to read, uh, somebody is going to read from 25 to 27, just those three verses. Then we look into them the, and try and piece out what we can glean from there. Okay. So know therefore and understand that from the going forth 
of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the coming of the anointed one. A prince shall be seven weeks of, of years and 72 weeks of years. It shall be built again with city, square, and moat. But in troublous times, troublous times, and after the 62 weeks of years shall be an shall the anointed one be cut off or killed and shall have nothing and no one belonging to and defending him and the people of the other prince who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary its end shall come with a flood and even to the end there shall be war and desolation and decreed. Um, and he shall enter into a strong and firm co co covenant with the many for one week, seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and offerings to cease for the remaining three and a half years. And upon the wing of pinnacle and ad nominations shall come, one who makes desolate until the full determined end is purged out on the Desolator. We missed, right, we'll I think we, also going missed, into... we missed chapter 24, verse 24, didn't we? We didn't oh, talk we... about the beginning. It says 70, 70 weeks of years or 490 years have been decreed for your people, oh. and for your holy city, Jerusalem, to mm -hmm. finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make atonement or reconciliation for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, right standing with God, to seal up vision and prophecy and prophet and to anoint the most holy place. Amen. Oh yeah. Th thank you for, yes. for reminding us 70 weeks were decreed to for Jerusalem, the holy city. So you find now that Daniel was praying for the for the for his people and for the city that was destroyed. And God now talks about the same city that 70 weeks were decreed. So we are going to look at the 70, 70 weeks of Daniel and what it pro, what it means and how we can glean several things that are mentioned. In, in verse 24 alone, there are several things that are mentioned there. Let me see whether I can. Yeah, they are listed here. The first one was to finish transgression, 70 weeks mm -hmm. to finish transgression. Taking away the law that aroused the sinful passions by introducing grace. We know that we have already had grace introduced by the death of Jesus Christ, but to the Jewish people as a nation, this has not yet become a reality. Mm -hmm. So to finish transgression, the word transgression, it means a lawbreaker. So they are still breaking the law because they are under the, the law. When you are under the law, you become a lawbreaker because the law always brings a case, Galatians 3, 3.13, 3, case be everyone who is hung on the tree. The law cases everyone who does not continue the things written in the law. So the law always brings people into sin. So Israel has to experience the finishing of transgressions by being saved. That's where the Bible in Romans 11 says, all Israel will be saved. At some point after the great tribulation, Israel will receive the Messiah and embrace grace. To make an end for sins, that's bringing an end to the sin, second sinful career of this planet. There's a first sinful career of this planet, Earth, 
that occurred between Genesis, between Genesis 1 and verse 1 and verse 2. Satan used to rule this planet. Is, I mean, you can go through the, the, the scriptures and find, find that this planet used to be inhabited. And there was a flood of Lucifer that destroyed the first inhabitants of this planet. So that's when, that's when man was now created in Genesis, let us create man. It was after the angelic rule of this planet by Lucifer. So to make a reconciliation for iniquity, restoration of the tabernacle of David, which is fallen, that's for embracing forgiveness. The Jews need to embrace forgiveness. Because right now they are trying to end it by the law. The law will always try to make you earn it. You see people who are performers. I've seen in churches sometimes you find people who try to perform to earn. That's what the devil de delights in, people who try to perform to earn. Hmm. When you eat of this tree, you become like God. Perform in order to earn. But if, if you are in grace, you realize that you are already. Adam and Eve tried to become what they already were. Mm -hmm. They were created like God after our own image and likeness. If you look at those Hebrew words, damut, likeness, and image, thelem, image like God, and likeness of God. What more did they want to be? And the Bible says Adam was given such knowledge that he could name all the animals. So he was already like God. Mm -hmm. But the enemy says, if you want to be like God. So the enemy often tempts you on what you don't know, ignorance. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that they were already like God. They didn't need to be tempted. And the Bible does say that Adam was not deceived. Adam merely ate to, to go along with Eve. Mm -hmm. Bring in everlasting righteousness. Mm -hmm. That to bring the Jews into righteousness by faith. Not the righteousness of the law, which is based on performance, but the righteousness of faith. The Bible says we are the righteousness of, of Christ, of God by in Christ by faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I think verse 17, we are, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we may become the righteousness of God through Christ by faith. To seal up the vision and the prophecy. The word written here, prophecy, in Hebrew is not a verb. It's a noun, which means prophet. To seal up the vision and the prophet. That's bringing conclusion of Gentile dominion. We are talking of the, 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 the vision of Gentile nations dominating Israel. So sealing up the vision means bringing a conclusion of Gentile dominion by a prophet. And that prophet being the Messiah himself, mm -hmm. Christ will come and crush the last Gentile king to rule over Israel, which is the Antichrist himself. Mm -hmm. To anoint the most holy, I think our time is to anoint the most holy, the Kadosh Kadishma, the holy place, cleansing and rededication of the temple, the third temple that will be built on, in Jerusalem after the abomination of desolation has been put in the wing, as we read in, in the last verse of verse, verse 27. There's an abomination that the Antichrist will set up in the Jewish temple. So to anointing the most holy is the cleansing and rededication. Like we're talking of Anuka, the festival of Anuka. There was a cleansing and rededication of the second temple that Antiochus Epiphanes had defiled by putting his own image in that temple. So I think we will end here. And next week, by God's grace, we pick up from there because we have not yet really started the 70 weeks, we just talked about these things that are mentioned that were to end in the 70 weeks of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So I think for today, because of our time, we end here. Next week, we'll pick it up from there. We'll just start from verse 24 to 27. Those four mm -hmm. verses of scripture, because that's where the prophetic word is best. Back to you, Tendai. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a deep teaching, isn't it? <laughs> uh, we'll just, let's just pray for Pastor Koss and thank um, the Lord for, for this teaching. And that even as we, you know, chew on it during the week, Father, we thank you for such a time as this, a time 
to break down the scriptures and get this broader picture, this greater understanding of the events um, that were associated with the time that you you released this revelation to your servant. We thank you for Pastor Cos. May you refresh him. Give him greater insights, greater revelations as he as he cuts and dissects the word, making it palatable for those. Oh, Lord, let the word become flesh in our lives as we are able to, to break it down even further and, and assimilate it into our lives, into our systems, into our own dreams and revelations, the things that you are showing us of this time and the times to come. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your holy name. Thank you for the gift of teaching that you've put upon mm-hmm. We pray for more oil, more grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming. Hope you have been blessed. Look forward to see you for the conclusion of this chapter next week by God's grace. Have a pleasant week and God bless you. God bless you.